Okay, I'm gonna do a very quick and dirty custom control. Custom button. Uh, next we're gonna actually add the custom control. Custom control. Neat button. This designer for the custom control is pretty useless. Uh, but we'll need to open the code for it. I'm gonna kill this default handler. One thing, uh, especially if we're gonna do like double buffering or something, on paint background, I want to just do nothing here. It, otherwise, I, I've had problems in the past with flickering. So I, I, I personally recommend to not do any background stuff there. Um, I'm going to grab my graphics object out of my parameters for ease of use. I'm going to grab my rectangle and shrink by a little bit so I don't have the right bottom clipped off. Uh, I'm going to fill my entire rectangle with my parent's back color. Which will give us kind of a transparent look. Um, then I'll draw an outline, say in blue, and then I'm also going to draw our actual uh, title. I'm going to want to center everything. I'll use the text parameter. I gotta cast my entire rectangle to a float because they didn't give us an override that'll take integers. Bastards. There. Easy peasy. One thing that kind of also ticks me off is um, if we change this tarec this text, <laughs> sorry, I almost said Tourette's there. Um, if we change this text parameter of our control, it will not automatically redraw. So one thing that I like to do is completely override this text. When we get, we'll return base.text. When we set, we'll check if we're setting to the same thing. And if so, don't do anything. Otherwise, go ahead and set it, and then just automatically invalidate ourselves. Um, yeah, that's about it. We need to build our project, make sure that it succeeds, keep in mind what configuration you're using, and switch over to your form. And in your toolbox, really anywhere in here, just right-click, go choose items. Now, wait a moment. In this list, there's a bunch of stuff. Go ahead and press Browse and look for your project. And in bin, choose the folder that you just built. I'm going to choose custom button.exe. Open that. And you'll have to do this every time you add a new custom control to your project. Um, just reopen this, browse for your executable after you've built it. And it will automatically drop in any custom controls that are in your project and even select them. So you just browse and then press OK. And they'll pop up here under all Windows forms at the bottom of the list. And you can simply drag and drop that onto your form. And there we go. And with that nice uh, text override, we can... Oop, hang on a second. Something. I didn't. I don't even know how that got dropped in, but anyway, um, if we change this text to anything else, then it you know nicely redraws. If we didn't have this piece, I'll just show you real fast. So I'm a big advocate for automatic invalidation. If I were to change this text, I press enter. Sorry, I need to rebuild first. I need to make sure 
I don't know how that got there. Okay. If I do that, nothing happened. It's not until I do anything else that it decides to redraw. So that's why I definitely recommend when you're having something that should change the appearance of your control to use a property and automatically invalidate the sucker. It works in the designer. It works during runtime. Uh, it's just nice to have your controls be a little bit smarter. Uh, it looks like I might have made a mistake with the lower corner bit there. At least with the background color. And keep in mind, after you make any code change to your control, you'll have to rebuild for it to take effect in the designer. Let's add a couple other properties here. You'll notice I'm doing the same kind of thing. This actually can be private as well. With the automatic invalidation, uh, this is going to be the same. I'm just going to do a little find and replace. Uh, with pressed. So we have a pressed and a hovering, which we will have modified on mouse move we'll be hovering on mouse leave we will not be hovering on mouse down if it's the left button then we'll be pressed And on mouse up, if it was the left button released, then we're no longer pressed. And we'll change colors here. And same with the, oh, I'll just leave the text color as is. Then I'll go ahead and add a, a click handler here. And uh, it's very simple. And we can run the project and see this baby in action. Look at that, very nice, very clean, very functional. And uh, let's add uh, different shapes, different shape options to our button. Uh, one cool thing that we can do, let's make an enum here. Uh, oval and rectangular. make it oval by default and we're going to add uh, some magical stuff here this needs to be a property by the way if we're going to make it available in the designer
There we go. So if we wanted to be able to modify the shape of the button between oval and rectangular from the designer, there's a couple entries here that we'd have to create. And remember, this can only be done on a property. We can't do this directly to a variable, only on a property, which is fine because I like to invalidate automatically. Otherwise, you'll have to change the property and then tweak the control in some way, in, even in the designer, in order to see that the changes happen. And that, that's kind of scary. So this is actually going to be a, uh, an attribute. First, we're going to add a description, which is just a tooltip, really, for this. Modifies the shape style of the button. Next, we'll put the category that this property will appear in, which is going to be in the appearance cap category. And you can even create your own categories here. But this is a standard one that has the font and the text color and etc. So I'll place it in there. Um, <coughs> we'll also specify a default value. Now, if you're making a simple integer or boolean or anything, then this is very easy. Otherwise, we'll have to use the 11th override which accepts a type and string, which is uh, pretty nice. I'll show you the benefit of that. So we'll first get the type of our shape enum, and then as a string, we'll specify oval, which is what we have specified as the default here. And that will automatically cast into a shape enum uh, enumeration. Next, we will say, this is the most important piece, browsable is true. That will actually make it appear in the designer. And as a finishing touch, you'll notice, I'll just bring to somewhere here in the code, if we go say show, we have a description here in the code. If we go to our own type, there's nothing. It's just blank. So one cool thing that we can do is uh, I like to just copy this description and above here, I'll add three slashes, and then just paste the description again. Now, if we were somewhere else in the code to modify our shape type, we have a description there as well, just like all the other standard members. Boom, that's it. Rebuild, and then in the form, in the properties, we now have a shape type which we can select rectangular. We're back to oval. And you can do this with color schemes or, uh, you know, font bold or font scales, uh, you know, any kind of effects or whatever other behavior you'd like to have. And that pretty much concludes the tutorial. I hope you uh, found it interesting and helpful.